What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Trust the Bank podcast. Two shows a week, or at least that's the goal. One live, one recorded. This is a recorded show. Hopefully, everybody's doing all right. You know, with the Ravens news recently, it's okay if you're not. We understand. We know how it is. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, go check out the podcast platforms. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, we love a review. You know, we appreciate five stars. If you want to give us one star, we can't stop you. But we're doing a giveaway uh, at uh, 50, 50 reviews on Apple Podcasts. And Spotify just announced a feature that they are now uh, having followers. So if you want to follow the pod on Spotify, go ahead and do that. But Joshua, we got plenty of stuff to talk about today. And, you know, I think first off, what we got to do, we do it every year. We do it almost every month. Yeah. It's like we do it every week now. Of course. Odell Beckham Jr. meeting with the Ravens again, not in Baltimore. In Biltmore, Biltmore, Arizona. And every, <laughs> I said, everyone saw that tweet and was like, what? Josina Anderson misspelled something and didn't delete the tweet? Like, what's going on? No, nope. they're in Biltmore, not to be confused with Baltimore, um, and they're talking. And apparently the Ravens, from other reports, the Ravens are like heavily pursuing and they are like actually going after. This isn't a light meeting. They are t- attempting to truly sign Odell Beckham Jr. Joshua, let's just hear it right now, man. What are your thoughts on bringing Odell to Baltimore? Uh, man, um, this is now, what is this, March 29th that we're recording this episode, and now I'm hearing that the Ravens are reaching out to Odell Beckham Jr. heavily. It kind of it kind of worried me. And the reason I say it worries me because this is someone that we do know that has injury, has a series and history of injuries. So are you asking me, do I want Odell Beckham Jr.? Yes, but do, when do I want Odell Beckham Jr.? I want him when it's time to make the playoff push. I do not want him this soon for the simple fact, if he plays early, I'm scared that I won't have him for the rest of the season. And then on top of that, you know, you have someone else uh, in on our roster, in our wide receiver room that has, I wouldn't say is injury prone, but does have a little bit of history of injury since he started in the NFL and Rashad Bateman. So, you know, What if those two guys go down at the same time? I'm just a little worried about that because, you know, both of them can – I feel like with Odell being the veteran that he is, uh, Rashad Bateman can learn a lot, but I don't want want to miss two guys that's very dynamic and will play a big role in this upcoming season in the passing game around the same time. But, I mean, I do love the fact that the Ravens are um, being aggressive. I mean, granted, you know, he's – Odell Beckham Jr. is one of the older guys. They're not going for none of the younger guys. I guess they don't see none appealing, which is totally fine. It is what it is. But um, I like the fact that they're trying to be aggressive. I wish they would have done it sooner. But maybe this helps sway the decision of someone else maybe possibly signing their franchise tag. Who knows? (laughs) Yeah, and I think the injury concern is is very valid because, you know, hopefully – with our guy gone, the the GOAT, the strength and conditioning coach to end all strength and conditioning coaches uh, is gone. Uh, hopefully the Ravens' health is going to improve. Um, you know, maybe we got to get everyone on that, the entire gym workout plan. Maybe that'll fix them up. But I think that Odell Beckham Jr. could be a Ravens, a true Ravens successful wide receiver signing. And what I mean by that is the Ravens have had two successful wide receiver signings. I would argue in their history, they signed Tor, not Tory Smith. They signed Steve Smith. Tory Smith is a great draft pick. Signed Steve Smith, and they signed Anquan Bolden. I think those were the only ones where it was like, yeah, that really worked out well. There were other guys, you know, we brought in Jacoby, Derek Mason. That's my like, top three. <laughs> yeah, and it's like Odell Beckham Jr. I think is fitting into that mold perfectly. Former superstar. You know, over the last couple of years, hasn't been the same caliber of player, but still shows flashes. He was just in bad situations. Like Cleveland with Freddie Kitchens was a terrible mm-hmm. spot. Nobody wants to be with Freddie Kitchens. He sucks. Um, and then he got hurt. And, you know, when he was healthy, he don- he was the best wide receiver on the L.A. Rams when they won that Super Bowl. Like in the postseason, he was the guy. And Cooper Cup won the triple crown that year. But Odell was the go-to guy in the postseason. And I feel like, hey, bringing him in, you know, keeping him healthy and not overworking him because I think that's the other issue he's had is he's been like, you know, the true number one force feed Odell at all times. I think if we don't overwork him, he could be, he could be the best signing ever. I think he could top Anquan and he could top Steve Smith, but for him to do that, he would need to 
sign a multi-year deal, which I don't think he would do. I think he would sign a one-year deal with the Ravens. I think he'll do that with any team, sign a one-year deal, and then you know prove himself and then go somewhere else or return and stay. Um, and, but that's what the Ravens like to do with their vets that they bring in. That's how they do it with Justin Houston, JPP. Um, they just like to bring guys in and be like, hey, we'll give you a short one-year deal, prove it, we'll keep you if you, you, know, you show us that you're still legit. And Odell's not too old. I feel like his skill set is not built on speed. I think it's built on his hands and it's built on kind of his savviness. Um, and you don't lose that with your injuries. So, you know, I think Odell Beckham Jr., I really like it. And it's also something where it's like, okay, I think it would show a commitment to the wide receiver position. As much as, you know, it's concerning, you know, bringing in a guy that kind of has injury prone, but this would be the first, this would be the biggest star player on offense the Ravens have ever signed. This is very true. So let me ask you, let me ask you this: If you know, if the if they can get the deal done, yeah, come April, uh, what twenty seven? Do you still want a wide receiver? Yes, but probably not in the first round. And I'm okay. fine with that because I wasn't pro wide receiver first round anyway. Okay. Um, now maybe if someone like, you know, you can get like a Quentin Johnston at twenty two, where he's a developmental player. Um, and you know, the, the better corners like a Cam Smith are gone and Brian Branch is gone and stuff like that. Maybe go after a wide receiver, but I think, I think a, a core for this year of Bateman and Odell is one and two, which I think is really solid one and two, mm-hmm. you know, not the best in the league, but I think it would be decent. I don't think people would look at it and be like, man, the Ravens receivers suck. Um, and then Aguilar and Duvernay battling it out for that three, four. I'm like happy if any of those players are on the field. Last year, I was angry. I was like, oh man, Kyler yeah. Wallace is on the field. Oh yeah. no, this play's not gonna work. Um, but I think with that core, I think I'd be very excited. And I think we would draft somebody in the later rounds with one of our later picks. And I just think like that would be the ideal scenario for me. Um, at wide receiver. And I think it would show Lamar Jackson, hey, we do have a commitment to you. Mm-hmm. And it would also it would also be something to Lamar where it's just like, and we'll talk about Lamar a little bit later as well. Uh, but it's just like, hey, we just brought you this guy. We want to play with you. We want yeah. you to be here. If you sign this contract extension, right? We're not even going to talk about numbers at this point. We can free up significant cap space for this year. And we can get someone else. Right, we could go after someone that you may really want, but this would be you know kind of that first step of like, hey Lamar, we got our guy. What else do you want us to do? Let's get this deal done. And obviously, signing Odell is not going to reduce Lamar Jackson, you know, his value. He's not gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna take a massive pay cut now because the Ravens got Odell. I think it's just more of a step in good faith of you know what? I see your frustration. We want to help you out, not just with giving you money, but we want to get you assets and we want to get you players. We traded away your buddy. We know that he requested a trade, but we traded him away. We didn't replace him very well for you. Let's help you out. Let's just get on good terms again um, and then continue contract negotiations. I think that's kind of my thought process with Odell, but I also don't think Odell's going to sign until after the draft. Because I think basically every team is going to wait and see. Do we need Odell? Yeah. Because if you sign him before, you know, like you brought up, Joshua, are you drafting a wide receiver after you're doing that? If you're the Ravens, you only have five picks. Probably not. And I think that's the same for a lot of the other teams that have potentially been interested in him. Uh, Teams like the Cowboys are, are one that I've heard. And it's like, okay. And the Rams as well, you know. Do you draft a wide receiver or do you go after him? And I think you want to wait. And then Odell can wait and see and be like, okay, yeah, let's do this. Question I have for you, Joshua. Does Odell sign to the Ravens if Lamar Jackson's not here? How much is that affecting not just signing Lamar, but signing Odell? I mean, that's a big factor. I mean, let's look let's look at it the past couple of years. We we were in the talks or conversations for signing, signing Allen Robinson, but we couldn't bring Allen Robinson in for the simple fact that because we ran a run heavy first offense. So, you know, now people do know a little bit about Todd Munkin. They saw what he did at, um, 
They saw what he did with uh, in Tampa. They did see what he did in Cleveland. You know, Odell Beckham Jr. does have history with Todd Munkin too. So that that's that will help. You know, possibly you know him probably signing here with Baltimore. But the fact that Odell has expressed previously in past years that he you know a guy that he would want to play with is Lamar Jackson, and if Lamar is not here. Yeah, that I, I do feel like that plays a big factor. You know, it's just like it's just almost like basketball in the AAU circuit. You know, when you hear one of your buddies or you hear one of the top players is going to be at this on this team, sometimes in in this in this uh, today's sports world, a lot of guys don't want to play against the best player anymore. A lot of guys like to pair up with the best player. You know, when we think about you know um, the Fab Five out of University of Michigan. Jalen Rose and Jawan Howard were some of the, you know, the biggest recruiters, you know, calling calling those guys up, you know, and I'm um, saying, hey, man, if you come to come to uh, University of Michigan, you know, we can do X, Y, Z. So, you know, I feel like while Odell, yes, he may be talking to the Ravens, seeing what's going on. I do feel like he might send a, he might, you know, send out a text or a personal call to Lamar, say, hey, man, what's really going on with your contract situation? Do you really want to play here? And I like, what's up? Because, you know, if I come here, I'm expecting you to be my QB, throwing me the ball. So I mean, I do feel like you know that plays hand to hand. I mean, look at look at Aaron Rodgers. You know, be with signing with the Jets, he put in requests of guys he wants to play with, and the Jets made moves. So I mean, I do feel like that plays hand to hand. Yeah, and I think it's just all it's always something to keep in mind, you know. Who's the quarterback? Who's he going to be playing with? Because all those things happen. And Odell's a star. Mm -hmm. He wants to play with other stars, right? Is he as good as he was in his prime? No. But he's still a major presence in not just just football, but in sports. He's one of the most well-known football players in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's been five years since he's been at the top of his game. He's a superstar. He's from, you know, he grew up, you know, his NFL grow up was in New York being hyped up and going around the world and, you know, meeting all of these other guys. And it was like, dude, I want to play with a stud. And Lamar Jackson is a stud. So if he's not here, I think that does hurt, but I think maybe the Ravens get to him and they say, Hey man, we're keeping Lamar. And maybe they sign him telling him that. And I think if we sign Odell, I think that's, that's better for the Ravens in likelihood that Lamar stays because Odell wouldn't stay like wouldn't sign unless he knew Lamar was going to be here. That's kind of my thought, but 